So last week you saw we got the size knocked out, the mills plates are done, now let's move on to terrain. Last week we left off by having the size and the mills plates nailed down. Now that is a very boring process building the mills plates. There's nothing very exciting about it, but it is something that is very necessary and important to the structure of your mock. Now that we have all that done, I want to start with terrain. Terrain is one of the more difficult parts you're going to work with. And I want to start by getting that area that we're going to choose down pat to where we're going to put the rock work. Now there are tons of different elements you're going to use to make stuff like mountains, water, grassy hills, divots in the ground, trenches, anything like that. But what we're going to focus on first is mountains and mountains slopes are going to be your best friend. When you're using any kind of pieces that you plan on making a mountain out of, you're going to choose slopes, wedges, stuff like that. Now there is a massive mountain piece that we talked about before, this one, and I don't really like using it. I think that it is kind of a cheat. You don't really see a lot of the cool details that you can add in with slopes and stuff like that. It's just kind of flat on the front. Now when doing these mountains, there are tons of things you can do to make it simple, and then there's tons of things you could do to make it really hard. You can just simply stack slopes up on top of each other, or you could build little sections on plates and attach them using bricks with studs on the side to kind of build up and show that curvature. There's, there's tons of different things you could do, and I'm gonna show you a little bit of each of them in this video. Now one of the extremely good things about rock work is the colors you're gonna be using. You got light bluish gray, dark bluish gray, dark tan, maybe some light tan, some greens, um, maybe reddish brown anything that you're going to use like that is going to be a cheaper color now there is expensive routes you can go with this like dark orange but most of the pieces you're going to buy are probably going to be around 10 cent or less a piece now i have three examples that i've built in studio that are kind of very different from each other and it's three different variations of how it goes about maybe just stacking maybe using plates and tiles maybe using wedges everything like that and using a lot of the curved slopes also to create this little incline let's start all this out by finding out where we're going to place everything on this mock. I would like to keep the mountain in this back corner and have a river bed flowing along the edge. So what I first do is take plates and place them where I think the starting point should be. Very important task that needs to be completed is the base. What I'm going to do is use plates once again to find a foundation just like I did with the mountain so I know where areas I need to stay away from. This is going to be kind of the main base. This is going to be where all the clones are at and I don't wanna have mountains cutting into the building. That's, that's far more advanced than what I'm trying to show right now. So now that we have a rough outline, let's grab all these pieces, put them all to the side in the studio and start planning out where you want to put them. Always remember it's much easier building up than it is down. Towards the bottom of this is going to fade out into plates to show kind of different texture that goes along with the slopes. Now what I wanna do is throw in the next element group, which is like wedges and plates. These don't ever have to be placed anywhere specific. Remember hills and rocks kind of go in every direction and have no consistency whatsoever, but in a weird way you do kind of have to have a pattern. So on the next part, what we're gonna do is layer up. Remember three plates equals one brick. Another thing you always need to pay attention to is the piece you're using. Make sure it does come in that color and that that is not an outrageous price. If you don't know how to do that, comment down below and maybe I'll show in the next video kind of a little snippet of how to make sure everything you are using and you are choosing is easily gotten off of BrickLink. We want to use common pieces in doing this. We don't want to use something that is very uncommon or rare because it's just it's really going to be expensive for no reason and you kind of want to save your money for other areas. Now that we've got these wedges out here, we've got the slopes on the side. Let's go ahead and put a line of brick behind those slopes to kind of create a structure to add on top of. Now remember, you always need kind of support underneath when building vertical. You can't just have something floating. Once you add any kind of weight to it, it's just going to fall through if that's the way you've chosen to do it. And now that you can see the outline of what's going on, it kind of gives the expectation of size and layout. Now, what do we want to do moving forward? Do we want to make this extremely tall? Do we want to make this a little flat plane area? How do you think this should end up looking? Let's go ahead and speed through the next couple of layers. I've used bricks to start the next foundation for higher levels. Now, instead of packing this full of brick, doing this allows you not to lose your stability and to save on pieces. You're kind of just adding plates 
just remember to put something in the middle of them when they're bigger plates that way there is something that kind of stabilizes the middle and doesn't allow it to sag the way I'm building this mountain really isn't difficult. There is much more complicated ways that involve much more drastic measures of planning. I did not do any of that. So let's go ahead and skip forward to this whole process and see the finished product. This is just simply me laying down and kind of building up. There's some easier ways like creating a frame out of bricks and then using some snot plates to connect the plates on the side and then you just build up on the plate like I have mentioned before, but there's a lot of prep work and planning to go ahead of that. This is just kind of thrown together to show everybody kind of what a mountain can look like. And I will be showing you more ways later on down the road how to do different things. And one of the things is when I show you how to do the rock on the plates and attach them to the frame will be kind of when I do the base. The base will be later on in the build. I want to continue getting this laid out. Now that you guys seen that, you see it is actually really easy to make slopes look really good and detailed. Now I know that there's a lot of people that use more curves. There's a lot of things that you can do to change everything about this like I said it's really how you want it and the reason why I have done this is because later on in this video series when all the terrain is kind of done I'm gonna go back and show you how to do things like trees bushes and stuff like that and that's really where you kind of hide some of the simplicity that is in this build and it makes it look extremely detailed and it helps give it a really nice look without having to do all the crazy planning don't get me wrong there is tons of plates there's tons of bricks that i went in to use this and it can be done a much simpler way when i was building the castle pretty much what i did was build a wall and then i built down doing that is a little bit harder but with that wall it kind of gives you where you need to build up to and it kind of helps planning of what pieces you're going to use and how you're going to do it because if you ever get too close you can just invert it slope it out to bring it up again and it kind of gives the dynamic of the the rock work looking a little jagged next week when we continue this series it's going to be moving on to rivers and and lakes and stuff like that now I do have like a little hint of the way ours is gonna look now I am gonna show you some different builds on there also to kind of show you different ways to make it look deep to add some more details to make it look like a beach type thing this is just a really simple way that I do it this is just a really simple way to add it to this because all I wanted was a river I didn't want some huge body of water that was moving a lot but remember guys if you like this series comment down below let me know let me know if you want me to add anything to this series let me know what you think about it what I should be doing a little different if you've got an easier way that you would like me to tell other people about comment reach out to me I'll be more than happy to kind of share the information with everybody and remember if you guys have any kind of footage you want to send in on these I need stuff every week and I thought it'd be a lot easier to get people to send me stuff that they have because a lot of people seemed interested in it but no one's really sending it out but I would like to thank everybody for watching come back next week to see what we're gonna do with that ri river remember like subscribe comment down below peace